I got a few requests to do a video on a rotational system, which until now I pretty much neglected because I feel like it's completely analogous to the translational um, problems. However, it's probably informative to go through it at least once. So I thought this would be a good place to do it. So what we have here is a shaft that is attached to the wall at the top. And on that shaft are two discs which we'll call disc one and disc two, an upper disc and a lower disc. And this shaft has some sort of elasticity. So it has a torsional spring constant KT1 in, in the top section of it, and in the lower section, torsional stiffness KT2. Uh, mass moment of inertia J1 of the top disc and J2 of the second disc are given. And then the coordinates are such that the angle of the top disc is theta1, and the angle of the second disc, the bottom disc, is theta 2. So first of all, we'll have a look at this using Newton's second law. And in the translational case, of course, we had simply F equals MA. Well, in this case, and we'll call that number 1. And of course, instead of A, I could put X double dot as the way we wrote it. Let me change that. X double dots. In the case of a rotational system, we have that the external moment that we'll call m is equal to j times theta double dot. Okay, so the first thing we do is we draw a free body diagram, first of the top mass, and let me see if I can draw it, it will look something like that. And if we cut it away from its support and we turn it by an amount theta 1, theta 1 again being in this direction, what we'll find is an opposing moment at the top, uh, which would be kT1 times theta 1, and then also an opposing moment at the bottom, which we'll call kT2 times the difference between theta 2 and theta 1, excuse me, theta 1 and theta 2. And so if we plug this now into equation 2, we find that uh, J1 theta 1 double dot is equal to minus, since this is in the negative theta direction, minus KT1 theta 1 minus KT2. theta 1 minus theta 2. And we can rewrite that as, let me write it down here, j1 theta 1 double dot plus, and let's group it this way, kt1 plus kt2 times theta 1 minus kt2 times theta 2 equals 0. This would be equation one. I'm going to erase this free body diagram just to get it out the way. And this is your first equation of motion. Put a red box around it. Okay, for the second equation of motion, we proceed in the same manner. We take the free body diagram. And when I turn the lower disk by an amount theta two, at the top, I get an opposing moment that is equal to kT2 times theta2. Okay, so we plug that into the equations of motion, or into Newton's second law, I should say, to get the equation of motion, and that looks like J2 theta2 double dot is equal to, and again, a negative sign because the moment is in the negative theta2 direction, and that is negative kT2 theta2 minus theta1, excuse me, I made a mistake here. This should be theta2 minus theta1. It's exactly the negative of the force that we found at the bottom of the top disk. All right, so that's minus kT2 times theta2 minus theta1. And I'm going to rewrite this as J2 theta 2 double dot plus k t 2 theta 2 minus k t 2 
theta 1 equals 0. We'll call that equation 2. And that is our second equation of motion. And we are done. This system is completely analogous to the system we, we looked at in the previous problem when we had two masses like this and they were attached by a spring and then a second spring to the wall. So you shouldn't be surprised to find that the equations of motion in form are identical to the, that of the previous uh, video. And the, the link is up top on the right. Uh, of course, the KT, the Js are replaced by Ms, and the KTs are replaced by K1 and K2, respectively. Right, so I thought I would also look at solving this problem using the Lagrange's equation, since everyone seems to ask about that too. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this exercise using Lagrange's equations on the next page. So turning the page, I've gone ahead and I've written Lagrange's equation out for you. Um, We'll call this number 3 in keeping with our numbering. So what remains is for us to find the Lagrangian L, which is equal to the difference between the kinetic energy T and the potential energy of the system. And we can write this as the kinetic energy of the first disk, which is 1 half J1 theta 1 dot squared, plus the kinetic energy of the second disk, 1 half J2 theta 2 dot squared, plus the energy stored in the first spring, which is the upper spring, which is 1 half kT1 times theta1 squared. Excuse me, that's a negative sign, not a positive sign, since it's T minus V. And minus 1 half kT2 times the twist in the lower spring, which is theta2 minus theta1 quantity squared. We'll call this equation 4. And now we need to substitute equation 4 into equation 3 to get our equations of motion. And so we do that first with respect to theta 1. The derivative of equation 4 with respect to theta 1 dot, only the first term survives. So j1 theta 1 dot, and the time derivative of that gives us a double dot. Minus, so the sign flips, the third term survives. Minus becomes a plus. Uh, kT1 theta1 plus again kT2 well this would be theta2 minus theta1 times the derivative of that would give me a minus 1. Alright so if I rewrite this it's J1 theta1 double dot plus let's group these kT1 plus kT2 times theta 1 minus kT2 times theta 2 is equal to 0. And this is the first equation of motion. We'll call it number 5. Let's put a little red box around that. Okay. And then with respect to theta 2 to get the second equation of motion, we get that uh, J2 theta 2 double dot and then sign changes, so I get plus, plus kT2 theta2 minus kT2 theta1 is equal to 0. And that is your second equation of motion. We'll call it equation 6. Let's put a red box around that. And this is exactly, let me redo that, exactly what we found before using Newton's second law. So there you go. Two different ways of finding the equations of motion for the torsional two degree of freedom system. I hope you found something interesting in this video, something useful. If you did, please go ahead and smash the like button below or better still, subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of all new updates and releases. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.